Thank you to Brilliant for supporting PBS. Hey, smart people, Joe here. I need to talk to you about a bird. Our biggest wow factor mm -hmm. is probably this crimson topaz here. Well, and that's so not real. Hold on a second. Did you see camera. that? That looks fake. I also need to talk to you about a bone. So this is an opal. This is actually a whale bone from Australia that in fact has been opalized. <laughs> Every part of what you just said is ridiculous. That's probably the coolest fossil I've ever seen. And we need to talk about all these beetles. <laughs> Turns out you can order dead bugs off the internet. <laughs> I've been ordering a lot. All of these have one incredible thing in common, and it is nature's greatest color trick. In past videos, we've taken a deep dive into some really mind-blowing ways that nature makes color. We've looked for the blackest black. We've asked why blue is the rarest of all colors. But I've been saving this color trick until now because, well, I think it might be the best one. This is a phenomenon called iridescence. It means rainbow colored. We find iridescence in loads of places. Here, here, here too, and there, also there. Even in that dirty puddle out in the parking lot. But why? Now, color has many functions in nature, sometimes for getting attention, sometimes for staying concealed, and sometimes for reasons we don't understand. But iridescence is uniquely mind-blowing because the colors that we see aren't really there. They come from a weird trick of physics. To figure out how it works, I asked a beetle expert, a bird expert, and a rock expert to show us some of nature's most incredible examples of iridescence. It turns out if you go to a huge awesome museum like the National Museum of Natural History in Washington DC, they have entire rooms full of awesome colorful stuff to show you. We started in the bird wing. Get it? Bird wing. Okay, sure, so peacocks get all the attention when it comes to iridescent plumage, but I think that the fanciest rainbow feathers belong to the smallest members of the living dinosaur family, hummingbirds. They're gorgeous, unbelievable. Our biggest wow factor mm -hmm. is probably this crimson topaz here. Well, and that's so not real, is, hold on a second. Gives you a flash <laughs> at you the camera. That? That looks fake. It looks like somebody made a hummingbird in a lab and said this would be cool. Why do hummingbirds have these amazing colors? So hummingbirds, we think, it's always a we think in science, right? We think that hummingbirds have these amazing colors because largely they're using them to attract mates, picking who they might want to have offspring with based on who is the prettiest. Because pretty might indicate best genes, best ability to find food, best ability to care for offspring. And you don't so have a lot of parasites helpful. crawling all over you, which I know is exactly. a big problem in dating. These look really cool. There's like purple and green and everything. These are there. beautiful. The different body parts of these birds have different iridescent colors on them. You get these brilliant greens on the body and these really beautiful roses and violets on the tails. I mean, I can see how this would get attention in the hummingbird dating community. What is happening inside of these feathers that helps create these colors? It's just a little bit of a trick of physics. There are three things that make up the basics of, of this iridescent color in these hummingbirds. Melanin, which is the same pigment that colors mm -hmm. your hair. Keratin, which is what makes up the feather and also similar to your fingernails. And air. The way that light dances off of hummingbirds doesn't come from the color of the pigment in those feathers. It comes from how the feathers are built. Now, if we could shrink ourselves down to the nanoscale and look at them up close, what we'd see is millions of these pancake-shaped structures in these orderly little pancake stacks, all packed with tiny air bubbles. When waves of light enter the feather, they bounce off of those layers. Now, when light waves overlap, they can interfere with each other in different ways. Depending on the wavelength of light and the angle that it enters, the crests and valleys might cancel each other out to dim the color or make it disappear altogether. But at certain angles, for certain colors of light, sometimes those waves line up and are added together to make the reflected color even more vibrant. 
all of the light enters, but only some light is allowed to come out. So when you look at the feather from different angles, different waves of light line up as they're bounced back to your eye. That is what creates the sensation of shimmering, changing color. Yeah, that's the fundamental definition of iridescence is that the color changes depending on the direction that you are looking at it. Wow, that's, that's, that's pretty fancy. Not bad for some little dinosaurs. Okay, so hummingbirds are cool but they aren't the iridescent royalty of the animal kingdom. That title probably belongs to beetles. Biologist JBS Haldane once said that if nature did in fact have a creator, he has an inordinate fondness for beetles because beetles make up a quarter of all known animal species. And beetles themselves seem to have a particular fondness for iridescence. Not every beetle is iridescent, but the thousands that are, they have some of the most unbelievable colors in nature. I mean, honestly, if you didn't know that some of these were real, you'd be forgiven for thinking that they were painted by an artist or a YouTuber trying to trick you, but they are real. The outer layer of a beetle's body is made of this super stiff polymer called chitin. And when light hits these layers, it bends through a process called refraction. Just like when we look through a glass of water, the light waves seem to bend and not quite line up. The same thing happens to light in this beetle's outer shell. If those layers are spaced out just right, we're talking a couple hundred billionths of a meter apart, certain colors of reflected light waves will interfere and only certain colors of light escape at certain angles. Now, sometimes those refraction reflectors are in the farthest outer layer of the beetle's body, or they can be buried a little bit deeper inside. That's what creates the huge range of iridescence that we see in beetles. For instance, this one looks like a greenish, reddish rainbow, but this one here, you hold it to light, it looks like a hologram. But being shiny and iridescent may look cool, but one of the most important questions we have to ask in biology is why something is the way it is. Turns out these flashy suits of armor may have some surprising functions. You're probably thinking, oh, how could this possibly be useful as a defense or camouflage or something? We're pretty sure that nature doesn't bring about any kind of a change that doesn't have a purpose. And in most cases, you know, the really bright metallic greens are living places with lush green forests, with a lot of residual water. So being shiny and reflective in just the right habitat and just the right ecosystem can actually be beneficial. So the same beetle, uh, if you are six feet from it, may be really visible, but if you move back just 10 feet, it will start to fade into the background because of the way that the light is playing with it and the position you're and observing it. It's also easy for us to sort of look at this from the standpoint of human color vision, which is actually pretty good, versus say birds, which are the most common predators of insects, including beetles. And so their perception of what that looks like may be quite different than what our perception is. There's also lots of other things that being shiny might actually help you find mates, depending on the color patterns, indicate that, you know, maybe Maybe you don't taste very good, so a bird would leave you alone. And in some cases, it may actually be about a non-visual thing altogether. Something like thermoregulation is super important in insects because they can't control their temperature. They are impacted by the temperature around them. So having an ability to reflect some of that UV back so that you don't overheat is probably a good thing. So there's lots of speculated reasons, but we still don't have definitive answers as to for one particular species of beetle, why it's this way versus another species, but it obviously serves them or it would have dropped out of the population. Now, what I think is the coolest thing about iridescence is how completely distantly related animals can sort of stumble on the same physics for making color. This is a piece of abalone seashell that I keep on my desk. It's made of layers and layers of a different hard material called nacre. Light is bending and reflecting and interfering in almost the same way as in the beetle shell using a totally different material. And since the seashell stuff is basically rock, the iridescence can even be seen after these shells fossilize. This 
is a fossilized ammonite. And it's at least tens of millions of years old, and it's still iridescent. That is incredible. But I've been saving my favorite kind of iridescence for last. The beetle that I'm about to show you, I have to admit, I didn't believe it was real, but it is. Come closer, it's really small. This is an actual earthling. It's a type of beetle called a weevil, and this particular one looks like it was dipped in glitter. But this is also a form of iridescence. But to understand how this kind of iridescence works, we're gonna have to go to an unexpected place. The Rare Minerals Vault at the Smithsonian in Washington, D.C. The rocks and crystals inside of this vault are some of the rarest and most priceless minerals on Earth. To get in, we had to go through an armored door with an actual laser palm scanner, like something out of a spy movie, which I was not allowed to film because of security reasons. So this is an opal from Australia, which is where a lot of the great opals come from. This is actually a whale bone from Australia that in fact has been opalized. <laughs> Every part of what you just said is ridiculous. It's a whale bone from Australia that, that's in the earth that yeah. is not just a bone anymore, but it's been turned into opal. And, and basically the bone was there, it gets saturated with water that has silica in it. That porous material that was the bone got filled in with little spheres, opal basically. That's probably the coolest fossil I've ever seen. Isn't that pretty, I mean, it's <laughs> one of the most beautiful, right? Yeah. yeah. That is incredible. It is. Every day I walk in here and I go, something about the earth just amazed me in a different way. This is one of the most amazing opals I've ever seen in my life. I mean, this grew in the earth. This grew in the earth. Have you ever seen an opal like that before? No, I mean, it's, I mean it's coming from every direction it is. and yeah. the, it, they're big chunks. You'd swear this might put a little battery inside of there, yeah. right? I mean, isn't that the most amazing? Looks like an LED toy. Look at this one. This is also from Ethiopia. This doesn't look real. So you've got opals are made up of these little spheres of silica. These are spheres of silica, silicon and oxygen. They're probably formed out of a silica-rich solution. These little spheres of silica are, you know, here, you know, very tiny, wow. 0.5 microns, are stacked together very perfectly. I mean, it's kind of like, you know, we always say like oranges in a grocery store, right? Yeah. They're just all stacked together. And so wow. when the light hits those, they go hurrah, and you get these great flashes of, of color that we love in opals. We're, are amazingly orderly. Oh. Like, it, it looks like somebody went in with little tiny tweezers and was placing well, these one by one. Basically these little spaces in here, these are about the right separation size to cause diffraction to take place and you get the flashes of color. Well, right. light comes in, but what happens is light gets reflected off at different layers and mm -hmm. then in some places as the light combines, it combines constructively and other places destructively. So some colors are taken out, some, some, some are uh, accentuated. Right. Okay. And as you change the angle, that can change. Light coming in at different angles, different colors come off at different angles. As you're getting different parts of it, you know, the wow. orientation hits your eye. I mean, those flashes are just unreal, aren't they? Isn't that that really? is incredible. Yeah. The ordered structures that cause iridescence in opals are called photonic crystals. A kind of crystal where the bending and reflecting of light is happening in three dimensions in a periodic or repeated pattern. Photonic crystals are also what make these weevils look like they were dipped in glitter. They're like walking opals. There are nano-sized three-dimensional repeating structures in the beetle's outer shell. Some of them are built like honeycombs with orderly spaced pockets of air. Others are sort of the opposite of that with stacks of evenly spaced spheres with air in between. And just like in an opal, light is bent. Waves combine constructively or destructively and different flashes of color appear. All of these iridescent colors are the result of physical structures that bend light, not pigments or fluorescence or any of the other ways that color is created in nature just the strange and beautiful result of light waves interfering with each other. What I love most about these things isn't that they're beautiful. It's that we can look at rocks and shells and bubbles and birds and even beetles. And despite how different they all are, they're all tied together by this colorful bit of physics. It kinda makes the universe feel a bit less and a bit more mysterious. Stay curious. That's right, Paul. I think we should call ourselves the Beatles. Oh, you made yourself you made it to the end screen. Um thanks. By the way, if you haven't hit that subscribe button, 
Uh, if you enjoyed this video, now would be a great time to do that. Hit the little bell next to it too. You get notified as soon as we have a new video up and then you can watch it like immediately, which helps other people find these videos and learn cool stuff like this. Also wanna say a huge thank you to everyone who supports the show on Patreon for not only helping us amass this great Beetle collection, but also for helping us make these videos. If you'd like to join that esteemed club, there's a link down in the description where you can find out more and I will see you in the next video. Cheerio. And thank you to Brilliant for supporting PBS. Brilliant is an online learning platform for STEM with hands-on interactive lessons. Brilliant is for curious learners, both young and old, professional and inexperienced. But brilliant courses teach you how to think by interactive lessons and problem solving activities and exercises. And they also help you solve problems with interactive lessons in STEM. For example, Brilliant offers a course on scientific thinking. Explaining the world means thinking with scientific principles, but usually they're cloaked in all these technical manipulations. Now, in this course, you'll dispense with that number crunching and math and search of something more useful, physical insight. There are no prerequisites for this course. You'll explore the laws of physics and engineering principles and learn the rules as you play. There'll be plenty of surprises along the way, but by the end, you'll have gained the understanding and insight to look at the world differently. To learn more about Brilliant, go to brilliant.org slash be smart. Welcome to our show, ladies and gentlemen, the Beatles. I mean, the Beatles. All right, turn that away from me. I can't look at myself. <laughs>